doesn't cater your typical jewelry designs. Even when you look at contemporary jewelry, this is still something rather unique. The inspiration came from architecture and minimalism design. When I get inspiration, I sort of look through uh, architecture publications, magazines, and of course design uh, magazines as well. Of course, when I was doing the design, uh, most of the time I was just kind of sketched out on a sketchbook or sometimes I'll refer to the uh, drafting board and sort of really kind of figure out proportions uh, and, and the details of how they're being executed into the design. And of course the third resort is to use a uh, computational design method which I can actually uh, model the objects in 3D spaces virtually, then apply texture and materials uh, and throw in some uh, lighting and you can render it and really see how the juries it's being presented at a certain mood or environment uh, and how that can reflect the ambience of a really specific design schemes. And the aim for all of our jewelry is really to um, not only you can wear it for a fairly sophisticated environment when you go for uh, say like a cocktail party uh, and you can really kind of put on, on your cocktail dresses and your tuxedo and that will work quite well. At the same time, we're trying to design something that people can wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, something rather casual, you can just kind of go into an office uh, environment, uh, have a client meeting, and that won't be a really strong overstatement. All these design inspirations sort of came from a very famous quote set by a German architect, Mies van der Rohe, less is more. And with this idea, uh, also staying true to the materials, Art Deco created a really minimal design language that is really suitable for everybody to wear. As something that you think is just something very simple, uh, it's just sort of consists of straight line and straight corner, you will think um, that might be something fairly easy to create. And actually that's not quite the truth. Um, it's kind of like drawing a straight line without a ruler. It's actually very challenging, right? And that's sort of um, the same situations as our uh, fabrications process always run into, is to sort of create something extremely precise and pristine um, and that requires a lot of patience uh, and of course craftsmanship. and all these skills are sort of something that I learned throughout the time that I went to architecture school and I always have this idea to uh, sort of translate these building design details into um, human scale and uh, sort of just kind of drilling holes in metal and putting cables around it and um, start wearing it uh, occasionally and of course it became more complex as I learned more skills uh, throughout my educational career. I uh, learned how to kind of sort of build foam work to cast concrete uh, and then eventually kind of working with aluminums and weldings. Uh, all sort of things just evolve this concept of how uh, complicated it's actually got in this really sort of simple objects that I'm creating. economy is a very interesting time for the architectural professions and back in school everybody sort of talk about how we have to be extremely diversified to be successful in the, um, uh, this graduating class and by doing design nowadays it's sort of an educating process to let the public know uh, what the architectural profession is really doing of course uh, architects are dealing with much bigger objects building and um, things that I'm designing is at the very small scales, but this is sort of a reminder to, you know, to everybody to know quality design is actually quite important to the society. 
And ultimately, I'm doing something that I really love, which is design.